Hello, I'm your host, Dr. Jack Braha, and welcome to the show. Here we bring you local healthcare providers to discuss the topics that matter most to you and your health. Our guests are active in the community providing health care to our residents. We are happy to welcome Dr. David Miller, Chairman of the Department of Dental Medicine at One Brooklyn Health System and a Clinical Assistant Professor of Dental Medicine at New York Medical College. He is also an Assistant Clinical Professor of Dental Medicine at Columbia University School of Dental Medicine. Welcome to the show, Dr. Miller. Thank you, Dr. Bra. Happy to be here. Thank you for this opportunity. We are happy to have you. I'm always happy to have someone on from dentistry to talk about dental health, and today we'll talk about dental health in Brooklyn as well. Uh, you wear a lot of hats, a lot of titles. I don't know where you find time to do all of this, but you certainly appear to be able to do so, and it, it's really nice to have you here. As I like to start off most of the shows, we, we want to learn about our uh, guests, our healthcare providers, and for me personally, I always want to know everything about my dentist before I sit in the chair because I'm one of those fearful patients, as I'm sure you're used to dealing with. Absolutely. So tell us about you. Where did you come from? Where you? Where did you train? Sure. How did you end up here in Brooklyn and certainly at One Brooklyn Health System? So I grew up in, in Long Island, um, first to go to college, uh, and never, never thought about becoming a dentist. I met my uh, wife in, in high school, and her next door neighbor was an oral maxillofacial surgeon here in Brooklyn. And he took a liking to me and did a little mentoring and said, hey kid, why don't you come into Brooklyn? Brooklyn was like another part of the world as far as I was concerned growing up in Long Island. And I took him up on that uh, at offer and uh, went to a hospital uh, in Bed-Stuy, and that totally turned me on. I had no idea that dentists can work in hospitals and train residents and, and all the things. I just knew, the only thing I knew about dentistry was going in for a filling and it always hurt and it was always a bad experience. Right, I was always scared of the dentist, I never thought about becoming one and here you are. At what age did you realize that this is something you wanted to do? I uh, met my wife in high school and I guess by early college. So uh, you were young. I was young. And so uh, my pathway to Brooklyn, um, after I graduated from Georgetown University School of Dentistry in Washington DC, I came back and did a residency here in, in, in Brooklyn and Williamsburg. And uh, that was my introduction uh, to hospital dentistry, potential careers in hospital dentistry, and my beginnings of treating special needs patients, which is a, a passion of mine. Um, so I've been in Brooklyn for 36 years. Um, I've been training residents uh, for that entire time. Um, I've built uh, multiple dental uh, facilities and dental departments and expanding of dental services. And as I said, my passion has been to treat special needs by the population. All right, we'll, we'll talk about that a, a bit more in, in a moment. There is a difference between community dentistry, what people are used to just showing up to their dentist who might be uh, on the corner with a shingle outside the office, and hospital dentistry. For our viewers, just tell us a little bit of the differences that you uh, are doing here as a hospital-based dentistry program as opposed to what's out in the community. Well, I, I've had the advantage of doing both. I've maintained a part-time private practice my entire career on Long Island, and I've uh, had the advantage of also working in hospitals. Um, I think the, the, the big difference is uh, the ability to work in... in, in hospitals are like a multi-specialty uh, practice. We have every specialist there. Uh, we also train residents. We get patients uh, uh, referred to us that typically we could not be, for whatever the reason may be, to be treated in a hospital setting, um, usually because of sedate fear, uh, phobias, uh, medically compromised, and that's where the special needs also comes in. Um, so I've had the ability to train, to learn to go to the operating room, um, and, and so there is a, there is a difference. I, I, I look at our community-based hospital programs as a, a, a one-stop shop and we can, we can treat all ages. We treat children, we treat adolescents, we treat uh, uh, adults and, and, and seniors uh, in, a very, in a large group setting. So Unlike the, my own the private, toughest of cases you could see here of cases. as opposed to um, in the private setting where you also work. Correct. And in the private setting, uh, unless you're in a group practice, it's not unusual for me to refer you out for, uh, you know, for specific, specific procedures that I don't, but that I don't perform. So, but in a hospital setting, uh, especially in Brooklyn Health, uh, where we have the full spectrum of, of generalists and, and, and specialists, we can treat the entire family. So it's really the anything and everything type of uh, practice when you're in the hospital, where you have every little specialty provided. Um, 
And as well, you mentioned something about sedation and going to the operating room for maybe more complex Correct. cases. So there's a difference between just going to the um, private practice outside for the general well checkup for uh, patients who are seeking dentistry care and then the more complex. Correct. Care. And it's also the interaction every day with our medical colleagues. I, I enjoy the hospital so much more than in my private practice. Uh, working with my medical colleagues on a daily basis, uh, residents rotating through medicine, anesthesia, the emergency room, and so on and so forth. And I, so I find the same thing. In private practice, certainly I enjoy taking care of my patients and that relationship there with a the one-on-one. But working as a team with people in the hospital, I, I, that, to me, that's, that's the best part of my, my career as a physician. And, and in, in dentistry, it appears the same when you're working in the hospital, you have this team approach, and then you mentioned something about teaching as well, that you get to teach as, as you're working, which is really... And by teaching, you learn. I you learn, learn all yes, the time you learn more. twice. Yes. Yes. You learn twice. Yes. yes. Let, let's talk a bit about your work here with One Brooklyn Health System, because we were talking a bit before the show about how uh, incredible uh, the dentistry program here is, is evolving into providing care for the community at large. So tell us a little bit about One Brooklyn Health System and the unique dentistry program you're developing sure. here. So I'm very proud that, uh, for, that the Department of Dental Medicine is one of the centers of excellence for One Brooklyn Health. Uh, they've committed a tremendous amount of, of resources for the for dental services. So we, as I mentioned earlier, we can provide services for all age groups. Uh, and we have general uh, primary care team consists of general dentists, pediatric dentists, and hygienists, our specialists uh, providing specialty services include oral maxillofacial surgeons, endodontists for root canals, periodontists for gum surgery, prosthodontists for implants. We even have oral pathologists and dental anesthesiologists, which is pretty unique for a, for a community hospital basis. Not a university like an NYU or a Columbia, uh, but we've got a tremendous amount of resources uh, for the dental department. You mentioned something about all these specialists. I never understood the alphabet soup or the, the different names, periodontist, orthodontist, uh, but it seems like everything is here. Correct. Everything is here. So if someone is looking for general dental care, they call up one of our clinics here. We call them dental centers. Dental centers. Yes. Uh, that term clinic I, I do not like to use uh, because uh, we want to, we, the, pra the, practice, the dental practice here, the model is similar to a private practice. We want the patients to be given an appointment show up on time, their time is, is as valuable as any of our time, and to get them in and out. Yes, we have emergencies, and we have lots of emergencies, and that sometimes, you know, uh, uh, it's difficult with your schedule, but uh, it is a dental center, a dental home. And so they can call up here as if they're calling any private office, the dental center, make an appointment. What happens if they're detected to have some serious disease? What's the next step there? It, would someone have to go for further testing here like x-rays or do they have to go for lab work or biopsies and, and how does that get taken care of? Yeah, so it, it all begins with a comprehensive dental exam. Um, you know, many patients come in the first time for emergency, it be, maybe through the emergency room and then, and then during that emergency room visit we have dental residents on call 24-7 uh, so they have that interaction. It's not a physician or a PA or a nurse practitioner giving them a, a prescription and say go to your local dentist. Our residents will then treat the patient in the emergency room and then welcome them to one of our dental centers, make an appointment for them. So there's a screening done initially, maybe through the emergency room. That patient may also come through one of our dental centers again with the chief, a chief complaint. And so it's, that it's at that moment that we have an opportunity to do an exam, to welcome them and say, listen, we need you to come back in so we can do a, a, a full workup. It is, depending on the type of dentistry, it may not be unusual to refer them to our primary care physicians uh, for a blood test, um, as, especially if you're going to be doing sedation or certain types of, of, of surgeries. And our residents rotating in the medicine department uh, it works really well with our medical colleagues. We can make those appointments for them. Uh, the patient comes. The patient can come back in the electronic record. We've got the medical electronic record. You have a dental electronic record. So everything is there. So there's 24/7 availability 24 on an emergency basis. Once they get set up with the general dentist, they're locked into your system. They can see the other doctors. It's all in the same computer system. Everyone can see the records. So this is really a comprehensive center uh, for dentistry here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about dental health, because now the patient has made an appointment at the center, they're coming to see you for a dental checkup, and we all know how important it is, but really, what are the reasons, what are the health implications 
that our dental health can have upon the rest of our body? Well, that's, that's a very good question, Dr. Barra. It, there, there is research and my clinical experience has shown that there is no doubt a connection between oral health and overall health. Um, and so that um, uh, patients who have chronic conditions in, them, in their mouth, especially infections, there is an association with diabetes, with lung and heart disease, strokes, um, uh, premature birth, um, and, 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 and low birth weight. So there is no doubt, it's in all the, all the research and literature today, not unusual today for patients who are going to have surgery, for the surgeons today to ask to have a medical evaluation and workup to make sure that the mouth is in good conditions before having surgery. And we welcome that. So we work hand in hand today. Uh, years ago it was not like that, but our medical colleagues uh, are on top of that today and insisting before the patients have surgery, we would like you to get a clearance by your dentist. So, really so that's important to know, and for our viewers out there, that the dentist could pick up on other diseases Many that you're suffering from that you don't even know about yet Correct. by just looking in the mouth and doing a simple exam, which can be done at, at the One Brooklyn Health System uh, dental centers. And so if someone comes in for a cleaning, everything is fine, how often should they come back to be checked again uh, after the first exam? Twice a year. Um, if, if we have patients who have um, higher caries, red cavities, or uh, gum disease, we may have them coming in more often. But the, the recommendation is twice a year. For children, six months to a year. Six months is because when you, that's the normal time of the eruption of the first baby tooth. And that baby tooth, once it's erupted in the mouth, can get decay. So we'd like to begin to see those children as early as six, six months. So as soon as there are teeth, we see the dentist. We see them. And, and we and see that twice a year. Correct. And that's why we have a pediatric team that specializes uh, in children. We talked about some of the specialties. You mentioned anesthesia, which makes me think of sedation and comfort. There are people who are going to be watching this who are fearful, like I am, of going to the dentist. Because when I was young, I went to a dentist who didn't numb me up, didn't give enough lidocaine, didn't sedate me put me through a half hour of pain and I was traumatized. What can you offer someone who's watching today who's just really scared but knows they need to come on in? Well, first I want to share a little story with you because it's similar to your experience. So uh, my brother, my sister and I also went to the dentist and infrequently and our experience was exactly what you just said. We'd go to the dentist, we would get a shot of Novocaine and he would begin his procedure and you held onto that chair and you felt <laughs> everything. And by the time you walked out of the office, the pain went away because the Novocaine took effect. And so we thought that must be the purpose of Novocaine is to take away the pain that was created. Obviously, that's not the purpose, but yes. Uh, so today we, we have um, the ability, and that's why we have dental anesthesiologists on board. We can offer mild sedation. We can offer moderate sedation, deep sedation, and general anesthesia. And several of our dental facilities here, one here at Crookdale and one at Interfaith, actually have, an, have all our suites in the dental center so that we can provide those services outside of the hospital. You're not going to the op operating room, like an ambulatory surgery center. Um, and so even our pediatric dentists are licensed in, in New York State to do some, uh, moderate and light sedation. And so today there's no reason not to come. There's no excuse there's no to excuse. fear the dentist. And the laughing gas works very well. <laughs> And, uh, and so, yes, we can provide a very comfortable experience. Yeah, that, that's very important for our viewers who are concerned about their health. And, you know, it, it's important to realize how, impor how the dental health can affect the rest of the body. And the fear associated with seeing the dentist or the pain that's associated that people think about can be treated. And we have sedation. We have options. So really, you've taken the excuses away from people like me uh, going to get my, my dental health uh, in short. Sure. Let's talk a bit about uh, the unusual times we're in. Right, cool. Okay, Because we know that we should see the dentist from the time we have a tooth, so as early as six months, and forever going on in our lives. Mm -hmm. And COVID has really impacted everything. And um, you went through a tough time with COVID as, as a dentist because we were shut down. Correct. So tell us, where are we now? Can our viewers be comfortable with going to the dentist? What are the risks? Obviously, we know the benefits. The benefits of good dental health can you know, really impact our overall health. So what, what should our viewers know about the, the steps you are taking to keep them safe and ensure that they can be treated during the time of, of the COVID pandemic? So I am very proud of, of, of with the One Brooklyn Health System. They put in, we have put in a tremendous amount of resources and, and money 
uh, the American Dental Association, the CDC, and the, and the New York State Department of Health and the New York City Department of Health have all come out with guidelines and recommendations. And when Brooklyn Health not only meets those guidelines and recommendations, but it exceeds and exceeds. So let's, it begins with the patient uh, making the appointment. When the patient uh, uh, makes the appointment and we confirm the appointment, there is a COVID screening performed. Um, once they pass that COVID screening, um, then we uh, can move forward. When they come in for their appointment the day of, um, they receive a second COVID screening. And today, it's all, now it's all computerized. We have kiosks, so they can plug in their answers to their questions, and their temperature is, is taken. We, uh, our waiting rooms are now, uh, we limit the number of patients in the waiting rooms, There's social distancing in the waiting rooms. All patients must wear a mask, and if they don't have a mask, we will gladly give them a, a mask. Uh, the registration areas all have plexiglass up. We call them sneeze guards, so that there's a separation between registration and the and the uh, and, and the patient. Um, the HVAC systems in all of our in all of our dental centers, that's the air uh, heating and air conditioning systems, have all been um, e examined. They have all been um, maximized for increased circulation, uh, meeting all of the necessary standards for air exchange. We went one step further and all of the dental operatories we have put in air purifications right next to the dental chair uh, with uh, HEPA filters that will filter out the COVID uh, uh, virus. Um, prop, all proper PPE, the entire staff today is now wearing N95 masks um, and, and we made a, a policy at One Brooklyn Health that all procedures will have N95 masks. That is not the guidelines, surgical mask for many procedures is acceptable. Our dentists and staff all have N95 masks, they all have, they have face shields, they have gowns, they have hair coverings, and if necessary, foot, uh, foot coverings. Operatories are disinfected prior to the patient coming in and after the patient com uh, comes in. There is also a wait time in between patients, which decreases the number of patients we can see per day, but there's a 10 to 15 minute wait time in between patients so we can properly clean, uh, clean the room. So we are doing everything that we can, and also the staff. It starts with the staff. Before the staff begins their day, their, their, their shift, they also have a COVID screening and they also have a temperature check. So we know that our, our, patient, our staff is also safe to treat our patients. This is a, a, an incredibly comprehensive approach to ensuring the safety of dental patients who are coming into one of the centers here, whether it's for a cleaning, whether it's for a checkup, whether it's to have a cavity filled or surgery, to ensure safety. So. You've taken away two roadblocks from me and may, maybe many of our viewers who are watching today from coming to the dentist. Number one, we're going to be kept comfortable. We're going to get sedation or pain medications, local pain control. And not only that, we're safe, we're protected as best as we can from COVID above and beyond what's required. This takes a lot of planning. It does. A lot of time. Every single day. Every single day, you know, to screen every employee and to take temperatures and to and to, to do the cleanliness, every, and it, it's incredible what you're doing. And pa patients every day. Yes. Incredible, incredible. And, you know, it's really a, a, a show of dedication to the field and to the importance of dental health that all of these people have come back to take care of people while, you know, it, they put themselves at risk by coming into work every day and by going out and, and doing all of this. So uh, for the viewers out there, you're protected, you are screened, the people who are in there with you are screened. They're doing as good as a job as you can ever do here and above and beyond what the regulations require to protect everyone and, and provide a safe environment. So we talked about One Brooklyn Health System and the, and the dental center, and we talked about how you take care of patients, how wonderfully you do this and how you protect them. You are also at the same time as you are providing health care, you're training other providers to become providers in the dental community. Tell us a couple of the training programs and teaching programs that you have here where you're not only taking care of your patients, but at the same time teaching. One Brooklyn Health uh, is, is, a, is a very large teaching institution. Hundreds of medical residents, dental residents, and podiatry residents. The dental department currently has 62 dental residents uh, in three residency programs, general practice, pediatrics, and oral maxillofacial surgery. We're in the process of, of establishing a dental um, anesthesia residency program, a special needs fellowship program, and a geriatric fellowship. 
but 62 residents, uh, and we just received an, an increase from the Commission on Dental Accreditation to increase the number of residents. So uh, for the community, we are able to provide those comprehensive services for us as a teaching organization. Um, it's a tremendous resource. And what's really great about our training programs, we have applicants, we're going through the process right now. The residents just started in July, and we're now already interviewing. We have hundreds of applicants from all over the country. And we don't have a budget for advertising. The best advertisement are our current residents. Word of mouth. Word of mouth. When the students come and come in for the interviews and they leave, like, we want to we be there. So, and then I guess the blogs, when the students leave, they blog, just went for this interview, had a wonderful experience, or I did not have a wonderful experience. But obviously we're doing something right because we're attracting applicants from all over the country. Yeah, well, well Brooklyn is a unique place. I, I never expected to train or practice in Brooklyn. And when I first came to Brooklyn, as a, a medical student, as a medical resident, I realized I wanted to train here because you see everything. And you have some of the best teachers because they have seen everything. I wouldn't and, be where I am today if I didn't train in Brooklyn. Right, uh, likewise, yes. likewise. I, I think we have such a unique environment here. And so for the viewers watching, that's one of the benefits of seeing a Brooklyn physician, a Brooklyn dentist, because they most likely have seen nearly everything because our community is so diverse. Uh, and amazingly diverse. And so in your practice uh, here at, at One Brooklyn Health System, training providers for the next generation is so important. You mentioned something about special needs fellowship and special needs care. And for our viewers today who may have a family member with special needs, whether it's a pediatric patient, a young patient, or an adult with special needs, you have a unique opportunity here for them to receive special care. Tell us about that. So, um Yes, we see a large number of special needs patients because most of these patients uh, are not being treated by the general dentists in, in the community. We get referrals not only from the five boroughs but from Long Island. We have patients come as far from Pennsylvania uh, up and upstate. Um, it's because we have a, a, the entire team in one location and if the patient needs to be sedated, we can do everything during, during that sedation. We've got the, we can do the root canals, we can do the, the, you know, the fillings, the extractions, and, and, and so forth. But our, the dental profession does not currently have residency training programs that are GME approved for special needs. And we're working on that right now. And we're preparing ourselves, I, I believe that that will happen shortly in the next few years. And One Brooklyn Health will be positioned to be one of the first training programs in the country to have uh, specific training programs for special needs. And the same thing with geriatrics. One Brooklyn Health has two very large nursing homes. And our residents rotate and they get experience in geriatrics. But just like in medicine, tr I truly believe in dentistry, it needs to be a specialty. And so our general practice residents are getting that experience, but we need to really have a training program specifically for, for geriatrics and for special needs. And we're heading in that direction. You really are able to provide such comprehensive care with the dental center here from six months to whatever age uh, your geriatric life, population right? in life that, that people show up here. Special needs is, is I agree, uh, you know, in our practice as well, uh, a special population. Uh, we want to be able to provide them with all the same care that anybody else could receive, but there are some barriers, some challenges, and uh, I agree with you. I think that's such an important area uh, that's underserved yes. in our medical training and dental training, obviously. Uh, you're going to be leading the path on creating specialty training for our future in taking care of special needs. There's another population. There, there's so much here at the center. We, we could talk for hours. Mm -hmm. Yes, we could. Let's talk a bit in our last few minutes about veterans and veteran training here. And you have a special program for veterans. Yes, yeah, so part of our community outreach, uh, community health fairs are so important to us. Uh, and we do a Give Kids a Smile event once a, a year in which we invite uh, children uh, from the underserved communities to come in to have free dental, a free dental screening. Um, and at that point, we have an opportunity to, to capture and hopefully provide a dental home. And uh, a couple of years ago, we looked at the veterans. And um, the Veterans Administration uh, has a long waiting list uh, for, their, for, the, for our veterans. And so we began to do uh, a Veterans Day uh, including free screenings and doing some free dental work. We'd like to expand upon that. There's no doubt there's a big need for our, for our veterans. Yeah, the, the veteran population uh, has really suffered in terms of availability. 
they have good health care available they do. and good it's dental just, care. It's, it just takes time. It takes time. It's a long waiting list. And there's been changes in policy where they're able to now go out into the community and see people like you and me um, who may be able to provide care quicker. And so it's, it's, it's amazing to be able to provide care for our veterans. It's, it's one of my favorite populations to meet with and take care of because it's so rewarding to take care of those who really put everything on the line for you and I to be safe and get our training and, and live in, in the country we live in. So in summary, really, the One Brooklyn Health System has dedicated so many resources, it seems, to your dental center and dental program. What do you see as the future? What's the next step well, in moving forward? You know, vocations. Uh, vocations is, uh, is very important and uh, the community that we serve there are high schools that have a, a high percentage of um, dropouts um, and so vocations and so we approached Mega Everest Community College a few years ago about starting a dental assisting program. Imagine going through high school in your third and in your senior, uh, 11th and 12th grade and going through a dental assisting program so when you graduate yeah, and then hopefully we're going to help you go on to college, instead of flipping burgers, you're working in a professional office, earning a decent income while you're going to school. Maybe the end is the, that will become your career dental assistant. Dental assisting, especially in New York, in the hospitals, they're unionized positions, they're really great salaries and great benefits. So we're developing a, a program, it's a very unique program, there, there are dental assisting programs out there. What's going to make this unique? Several things. It's going to be a hospital-based program. So versus being in a dental office and getting some training. So when you finish this program, you'll have experience in all the specialties we just discussed, including sedation, including going to the OR. You're going to be able to get a job because you're going to have all of the super experiences. But we're also looking to create with Omega Everest is that maybe we want to go one step further into hygiene. So we're looking at hygiene uh, uh, pro training programs and hopefully some of those individuals might want to go on to dental school and maybe we can use some of those credits for, for pre-dental. So when I, when I asked Dr. Miller about the future, he's, he's creating the future, not just buying a new piece of technology. You are creating the future and the future of dental care here. And I want to thank you for coming on the show. Uh, we could have sat here for hours talking about how, how the comprehensive care you're providing is so important for the community. And thank you so much for being here. And thank you for the interest in our show and your desire to learn more about your health and become more educated uh, about well-being. I invite you to visit our website at zurmed, Z-U-R-M-E-D dot com and check out our tools and connect with us on social media. I'm Dr. Braha. Thank you for your interest in the show and the interest in dental health. And we want to thank again Dr. Miller, the One Brooklyn Health System, and the dental center that he is creating here, uh, moving into the future rapidly to provide great care to the residents of Brooklyn.